1961. Her speed and the Wild Weasel, which specialized in attacking enemy surface-to-air missile installations. The capabilities of the aircraft contributed to its performance, which was unheard of when it made its debut. Shortly after it was introduced, it set 16 world records. A few of these records were a world speed record of 1,604 miles per hour and an absolute altitude record of 98,556 feet. Five of the F-4's speed records weren't broken until 1975. Just 31 months after its first flight on May 27, 1958, the F-4 was the U.S. Navy's fastest, highest flying, and longest range fighter. It also holds the record for the largest production run of any supersonic fighter built. In its air-to-ground role, the F-4 could carry twice the normal load of a World War II B-17 bomber. But the milestones don't end there. It was also the first and only aircraft to be flown by the Navy Blue Angels and Air Force Thunderbirds demonstration teams at the same time. The F-4 saw combat in both the Vietnam War and Operation Desert Storm. During its time of service in the U.S. military, the F-4 overcame the challenges thrown at it. The Phantom was retired from combat operations in 1996. After its retirement, the aircraft found a secondary mission as a remote piloted target aircraft known as the QF-4. This new role was used to test pilots and a variety of air-based missions. The aircraft flew its final mission on December 21, 2016 at Holloman Air Force Base, New Mexico, closing the book on a one-of-a-kind fighter that has earned its place in combat and aviation history. We're the 82nd Aerial Target Squadron Detachment 1, uh, and our mission is to provide full-scale aerial targets for both Department of Defense and foreign military sales customers. Two, one, mark. Good mark, destroyed in half. We fly F-4s, so Vietnam-era airplanes. Uh, all of ours are between uh, 1968 and 1974 models. They're all F-4Es. They've all been converted to QF-4s, which means uh, they're a drone. The drone is in auto. Live mellow. Flaps down. Our mission is to provide those airplanes as targets for uh, our Department of Defense and for military sales customers to test the next generation of weapons. Uh, in today's case, uh, we are flying in support of an F-35 mission, uh, and they shot two uh, AIM-120 uh, AMRAAM advanced medium range air-to-air -air missiles at one of our drones. Our X-ray, the destruct package is being armed. I'd much rather see uh, one of these F-4s go down in a blaze of glory testing the next generation of, uh, of weapons rather than it just sitting out there in the desert collecting dust. It's not doing anybody any good out there. So uh, when we pull them out and recycle them, it really, uh, really benefits everyone. It gives me great pride to know that uh, when my buddies are out there in harm's way and they need to fire the missile or they need to use whatever weapon that we've tested for them, it gives me great satisfaction to know that that we've tested it and we know that it's going to work for them and it's going to protect them when they're out there. Pick up the unmanned drone off the runway 22, launch on my mark. We're about to transition to the QF-16 um, and this is the last flight that we're planning on doing an unmanned sortie uh, for the QF-4. We'll continue to fly them uh, as manned aircraft through the end of the program, which is through, uh, through December, but this is the last time that we plan on flying that unmanned. This will uh, most likely be the very last uh, unmanned F-4 flight uh, in the Air Force. Force. It's made a huge impact, um, both when it was uh, operational as a fighter bomber in, in Vietnam, uh, and then also uh, after it was retired in uh, 1996, then the Air Force decided to bring it back as a QF-4. We've been using it uh, as a drone where we can test the next generation of weapons and radars so that uh, our 4th uh, and 5th gen fighters are uh, the best that they can be. Yeah, it's mi mixed emotions when you, when you see them blown up for the first time because uh, it's just a great iconic airplane that has done so much for our country and um, it's sad to see it destroyed in that way. The more I thought about it and the more I kind of put things in perspective, um, the fact that the airplane goes down in a blaze of glory versus sitting around uh, at the boneyard at Davis Mountain or in a museum somewhere, I think it's a, it's a truly fitting end for a warrior to go out in that way. The F-4 is a, is a very manual airplane, and specifically the QF-4. Uh, a lot of the things that the, the F-4s had when they were operational uh, are not included in the QF-4. So it is a very hands-on type of airplane. Uh, in the same respect, it's a very fun airplane to fly. Uh, it flies very well for the age of the airplane. Uh, it accelerates very well. Uh, it does not turn very well, but it never did as far as that goes. Well, I think it's such a popular airplane because uh, first and foremost, there were uh, a lot of them built. There were about 5,200 of them built all in St. Louis. 
Um, and it, uh, it came about in a, a time that was pretty tough for our country during the Vietnam War. Uh, and it was flown, like I said, by the Navy, the Marine Corps, and the Air Force. So uh, a lot of people have flown on it and worked on it, um, not just in the Air Force, but through uh, all three of the services. So I think that's a big part of it uh, because it's not just an Air Force specific airplane or a Navy specific airplane. Uh, it's, a big, uh, it's a big platform that was, um, that was our primary fighter bomber uh, during the Vietnam War. There's been a lot of really cool opportunities uh, with the F-4 um, since we are the last ones flying it. There's been a lot of opportunities for us to take them on the road and uh, for the public to get a chance to see the F-4s one last time. And um, That's been really interesting and, and really cool for me to get to, to do that. Uh, I expected when we took it on the road that we would uh, meet a lot of people who had worked on them, uh, who had flown them over the years. Um, what I didn't really think about and what I didn't expect was the large number of folks, uh, Army and Marines, that were, uh, that were on the ground uh, in an F-4 save their life. Uh, just about every place I go, I hear at least one or two stories. You see the uh, QF-4 get blown out of the sky. Um, it's sad um, that the F-4 is coming to an end, but, um, but it's exciting because now we can bring up. One day in the bar on a Friday night, there was some fat dude in the, in the corner of the bar, you know, we're in a flight suit. I'm like, who the heck's that? And he goes, oh, they're F-4 pilots. I'm like, F-4 pilots? And we flew, flew F-4. So I went over there, talked to this guy, and he basically looks at me and goes, man, you're not going to get this job. We stay here till we drop dead. So, you know, the openings are few and far between. And I go, man, this guy's sort of rude. And, and I sort of forgot about it. And five years later, here I am, one of those rude dudes, you know. It's sort of ironic how it all comes back around. Every day, this Center for Tactical Air Support launches and retrieves hundreds of combat sorties. We represent a lot of people that want to kill us because they wish they were in that position, um, you know, obviously. The ironic part is not necessarily the F-4 pilots, it's the F-4 fanatics, we call them, you know, they're just all over the place. Uh, truly a, um, a live, uh, rambunctious crowd, I mean, sort of groupies when you get right down to it. Uh, and they run the gamut from young people to old people, it's not just Vietnam veterans, it's youngsters that are that, are, that have gotten bitten by the bug for whatever reason, because they live by a base, you know, and say, hey, when I was a kid, these things are flying over, and you know, I, the, the, the jet, jet engine sound is very unique. And they go to an air show, and they, they hear those things again, and it's just, it just brings back memories. For them, obviously, Vietnam veterans is a different story. You've got the Vietnam guys, that's understandable when a Vietnam guy comes up, Army or Air Force, and tells their story. Army guys especially, man, those are the guys that, you know, cry and, and pet the jet and go, man, that thing saved my life. These people's kids come up there and they know all these things about the F-4 and they can tell you about what it does and what it was used for. So it really is multi-generational, this airplane. That, and I'm not sure what other airplane will do that. Hard to believe that that thing was built when I was born. You know, whatever that magic was. Box. Three, two, one, mark. Good mark, drone is destroyed in half. It really lets you know how much of a following this airplane has and how big a deal this last flight really is for, for them, you know, and again, we're, we're here for those people. So in that respect, it's humbling, it's exciting, um, not really sad because in the military you get used to a lot of laughs. So in that respect, you're, you're used to that kind of stuff, but, but this really is special and, and we can feel that. I'm gonna miss going up there, you know, and messing around with the clouds and, 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 and uh, you know, flying through the clouds, the sense of speed, you know, going to Albuquerque. It's always, as a pilot, you always get that thing where you're driving with your wife and it's like, holy crap, three hour drive to get to Albuquerque. And then you look at her and go, man, if I was in the F-4, I'd be here in 10 minutes. You know, I'm gonna miss that stuff, uh, getting around. There's no, no better way to fly around the country than fighter air, and especially these last six months with the F-4. I mean, it was a rock star, and uh, we got to beat the posse bringing that thing around uh, to all these people, and it was a hoot. Cheers! Oh,